And then I said, 5K? I thought you said five cakes. Oh, well, hey, everyone, welcome back to Unity Kids. I'm so glad to see you. If you've been with us, we have been talking about training up for a 5K. And I don't know about you, but I already feel so strong and fast, and I'm ready to get out there. And if you're new with us, you're probably wondering, what the heck was he talking about a 5K? Are we really going running? Well, not really, but we are talking about commitment. And our definition of commitment has been this. It's making a plan and putting it into practice. Like I said, we're not actually going to run a 5K together, but we are going to have a blast learning and how to make a plan and put it into practice. And if we do, it will make us better at, well, pretty much anything. And we've also been looking at a scripture verse for this whole month, and it's been in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. And we're going to read this together as a team on the count of three. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Training the body has some value, but being godly has value in every way. It promises help for the life you are now living and the life to come. Great job. We can train for things that we need to be better at, whether it's learning how to shoot a basketball. Yeah, swish. Yeah, son, get it. Or maybe it's going on a nice run, learning how to pace yourself. Yes, just breathe. <sighs> or maybe it's learning how to sing a song. La, 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 la. Training is great, and it has some value, and that those are good things. But the most important thing for us to practice is our relationship with Jesus, and to do exactly what Jesus has asked of us. And we had four practices that we've been going over for the last few weeks. And last week, we discussed what it means to to hear God, whether that's reading the Bible, listening to a message, or sometimes it's from the words of our family and friends. And speaking of Jesus, when you think about it, how much do we know about Jesus? And there's still a lot that we don't know, like, uh, what was his favorite food? You know, did Jesus have a favorite color? Or, 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 or what kind of games did he play when he was a kid? And we may not have the answers to those questions, but we do know one thing that Jesus loved to do. He loved to talk to his Father, God. In fact, Jesus made it a, a habit to go off and pray pretty often. He would slip away and spend some time with his Father before the crowds would show up to hear him speak. And he would pray. But what is prayer? What do you think prayer is? I would like to open up the floor a little bit for discussions. And if you're with us in person, the teacher in the room, if you want to pause the video right now to kind of discuss prayer, go ahead and do that now. One day, after Jesus took some time to pray, as usual, one of his friends asked him, Lord, teach us how to pray. Now, Jesus didn't tell his friends that they had to pray for a really long time, and he didn't give them a list of complicated words they had to say, because it's not a magical thing, it's not a spell, or it's not, we're not conjuring up anything. Instead, Jesus gave them a simple example for his friends to follow, in which we follow today. And this is sometimes called the Lord's Prayer, and it's found in Luke chapter 11, verses 2 through 4. And Jesus begins his prayer like this. Father in heaven, may your name be honored. May your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us of our sins, as we also forgive everyone who sins against us. Keep us from falling into sin when we are tempted. Now talk about a prayer. That is a great example to follow. When I was in high school, there was a lady who would pray with all the students every single day, and we called her Memo Betty. And she would pray that prayer after each prayer request that we would give her. And it was really neat, and I think sometimes I had that prayer memorized. But what does prayer do exactly? And do we just memorize those words and say them over and over until God listens to us? But I also think prayer is through what we need to say to God. And we can talk to Him in our own words. And when we take the ideas of Jesus in this prayer, we can make them our own. So, how do we pray based off this example? 
Well, let's break it down. So the top part of the prayer says this, Father, may your name be honored. This is a great beginning of that prayer because it identifies God who he is, and he's our heavenly father thanks to Jesus. And we take some time to stop and think about that. In this part of the prayer, we are praising him and we are saying, may your name be honored because God is perfect and there is no one like him. And so when we pray to him, we should tell him that. We should honor God and praise Him by telling Him how great He is. And that prayer sounds a lot like this. Dear God, you are perfect and powerful. Or, Heavenly Father, there is no one like you. Or even saying, God, you are so awesome. And those are great ways to start this prayer. Okay, so let's keep going. Let's break this prayer down again. The second part says, May your kingdom come. God is our King. And he is in control of everything in this world. And he has a good plan for our lives as well. And when we say, may your kingdom come, we're asking God to make things right in the world. The way he planned them to be for us. And his kingdom comes when we show our love for him by showing our love for others. This is also like saying, Lord, help me shine your light to everyone around me. Help me share the peace and love to everyone. God, help me be the love for somebody new today. So that's exactly what that sounds like. So let's keep going. The next part of this prayer says, Give us our daily bread. Of course, Jesus wasn't just talking about bread, and he, but he meant to ask God for things that we need in our everyday lives. And we should ask him for the things that other people need as well. So this could be asking, Help me remember everything I studied in school today. Or, please help me control my temper when I get too mad. Or, please help my grandmother feel better soon. This is real life, and a lot of times, we just need God to help during these really rough moments. Okay, moving on. The next part of the prayer is just as important. And it says this, Forgive us of our sins, as we forgive everyone who sins against us. It's so good to know that we can ask God for forgiveness when we mess up. And we can ask Him to help us forgive others as well. And this prayer sounds like this. Give me the courage to stand up to my friends when they're watching a video that I know they're not supposed to watch. You can use these ideas of Jesus' prayer to talk to God anytime, anywhere, about anything. And remember, God is always available to us through prayer. And all we have to do is talk to him, and he is there to listen. So the next step in our training plan is this, to practice praying to God. It's so cool to know that Jesus gave us an example of how we can talk to our Heavenly Father. And it makes me feel so good to know that I can talk to God anytime, anywhere, about anything. And you can too. God loves you, and he wants to hear from you. And you can be honest with him and tell him exactly how you feel. Prayer is a great way that we can grow in our relationship with God and stay connected with him. So let's pray together. Let's use this format that we have just learned today. And let's give glory and speak to God now. So would you pray with me? Dear God, you are perfect, good, and holy. Thank you for sending Jesus to be our Savior and to be the example for us in how to live and how to talk to you. Help us to take time to talk to you so that we could seek you, ask for help, ask for forgiveness, and for strength. Help us to simply talk with you about what's happening in our lives and how we can show your love to the world. We love you and we thank you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We can pray here at church, but you can also pray with your family before you eat a meal. You can pray when you're alone. You can pray when you get up in the morning or right before you go to bed. You can pray when you're in the car or when you're at your sports or music practice. And you can even pray with a friend. And before you know it, you'll get more and more comfortable saying whatever it is that's on your mind. Just remember that God is always listening and He's always there for you. And you could talk to Him about anything. Because he is your perfect father who loves you. This is a great practice to have. Keep up the good work and remember to pray all the time. 
That's all the time that I have for today. So be safe and have an awesome week. And I will see you all next time. Jesus loves me, yes I know. 